we got a top 10 Dokkan Fest TUR list at 55%. I felt as if though I needed to do a video like this because there are a bunch of people out there who have a good amount of these TURs at 55%. So let's go ahead and start the video out with the honorable mentions. I have the STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. I have the Tech Fat Janemba. I have the AGL Kid Gohan. I have the uh, Tech Androids. I have STR Kid Buu and the Super Saiyan 3 Physical Goku. I have the Exchange Goku and Gohan, AGL Cell, as well as Tech Bardock and the STR androids now the reason why i think that the str androids cannot be on this list because they are way too heavily restricted post transformation just that clear cut as for tech bardock i think it's very crazy how tech bardock has his orb changing as well as his scouter locked behind five turns more so the orb changer because i think his orb changing is a very important part of this kit because it could really help him support the end of his passive where he gains specific amounts of uh, buffs with his uh, orb changing ability with his rainbow key spears obtained essentially that's what i'm trying to say i think once his orb changing wears off as well as the scouter this guy is completely a sitting duck as for agl cell i think agl cell is not that great until he gets to his perfect form really it's just always been like that for him at 55 percent and rainbow unless you're going against multiple enemies but i think agl cell is uh, i think he's a bit shoddy until he gets to his perfect form even at his perfect form this guy can be a little bit wonky right because you really have to shell out that cell unit to run right next to him and uh, it really depends on where you are at with this AGL cell. As for this uh, exchange Goku and Gohan, I mean, it's really based off of how fast you can get Gohan out. If you're able to get him out fast enough, he can be absolutely godly. But the thing is, is that at 55%, I mean, you got to wait till what? You're waiting till turn 7? And turn 7 is like around the end of the fight, buddy. So by the time you get Gohan out, it's going to be like the fight's damn near done. As for the physical Super Saiyan 3 Goku... I think that this guy can be good at 55%. The only issue is that this guy does have to do multiple super attacks for his defense to look rather solid. As for SCR Kid Buu, SCR Kid Buu just doesn't have the linking partner. Really, that's it. I feel like Kid Buu units are just stuck in limbo. Uh, the Tech Androids, Tech Androids are quite good at 55%. The only thing is that they are a self-sufficient, greedy unit. And I just feel as if though they don't deserve to be on the list. They could be there for sure. But I just feel as if though the units that are on the list above them are just outright better than the tech androids now for the agl kid gohan his support type ability is unmatched he does have a good support type buff giving key defense and this guy is an amazing active skill but the thing is, is that this guy has to stack up leaving him a little bit open for attacks now as for the uh, tech janemba i feel like tech janemba is uh, he's good the only thing is is that his most important abilities are locked behind the key and provided you do not get his damage reduction, which is the most important thing for him to get with his guard, then he's going to take damage through this guard. It is super important for the Tech Fat Janemba to get his damage reduction ability. If you, hey, if you get the support type ability off within the same, like, turn, great. If you don't, this guy's just going to look whatever because it's like you want him to get his damage reduction first. And if you don't, it's going to hurt this guy very badly. As for the STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, I feel as though this unit has no problem. I feel as though this unit is completely good enough to be on the list. I just feel as if though all the units above him are just working better. And notice how I left all easy ATURs off of this list. Now, let's go and start with number 10 being Tech Pan. Tech Pan is the most damaging unit on this list. It's very easy. With her active skill and her being able to just shoot out super attacks that do stupid amounts of damage. Tech Pan is a, it's an absolute dynamo at 55%. But her only issues are, is uh, her being in slot one, and it could be a little bit weird because she could take those attacks before she attacks because obviously she has that damage reduction, but afterwards, it's been like, it's like often that this unit will take a super attack after taking the attacks from the first slot. So this unit couldn't get caught, but the thing is, is that I feel as if though this unit's damage is just, it's crazy. This is one of those units where damage is, like, damage matters more than defense. <laughs> and this unit does technically have the defensive ability because this unit does have damage auction with defense. If I remember correctly, let me go ahead and get Tech Pan. Tech Pan does, yeah. 150% attack and defense start turn where 50% damage reduction to the first slot is definitely quite good. And she gains additional key and attacks the first attacker in a turn. So yeah, Pan can look quite crazy. And she builds up an attack and defensive buff with each attack performed. So Pan is quite good, for sure. 
and it's pretty good at 55 percent so i think that she is at number 10 based off of her damage and she has damage reduction defense first attack in the turn although she can get caught out after her damage reduction wears off when she does the before attacking thing right that's what exactly it is right yeah it's a uh, 50 percent damage reduction before attacking so yeah that could be a little bit shoddy for her but i do think that she's at number 10 and that active skill is just way too stupid for her at 55 percent honestly because she's greatly stacking her attack and she's stacking attack there she has a unit super attack she's she's a good card she's quite good and she does have a good leader skill to bond the friendship for sure now next up would have to be uh, Ajo Ginyu Ajo Ginyu is quite good I feel as if though not much has really changed for Ajo Ginyu and even at 55% he's still actually quite good let's go and take a quick peek at him he does have a good leader skill he has a good super attack effect with him stacking defense he starts out with a su sufficient amount of uh, attack and defensive buff he uh, is a support type unit to the Ginyu force category right so yeah he's a support type unit that's uh, effective against all types with additional super attack chance it's like this guy is quite good and his body change condition is very very easy to get off you just have to be below 70% or less HP from the fourth turn from the start of battle and his links with other Ginyu Force units are it's just it's absolutely great because loyalty, <laughs> two key and five percent damage reduction. I mean that's very good. And of course when he goes into his uh his little body change thing, he then stacks attack. He has uh, HP recovery and then he gets crit chance. What's that? Crit chance, dodge chance. Yeah, crit chance, dodge chance, and uh, chance to foresee enemy super attacks. So Ginyu at 55% is definitely a workable option for sure. The only thing is with this unit is that he wants to be around Ginyu Force units to bring out his full power, but when he's around Ginyu Force units, he's an absolute killer, right? So Ginyu is for sure at number nine. Coming at number eight, we have Int Vegeta. The main thing with Int Vegeta was that Trunks restriction. And when we got LR Vegeta and Trunks, he just became so much better. I feel as though Int Vegeta is better than... AGL, Ginyu, and both Tech Pan just because of the Trunks and Vegeta rotation with LR, no, excuse me, the Trunks and Vegeta rotation with uh, the uh, Int Mod Vegeta had a brain fart for a second, guys. <laughs> so yeah, I think Int Mod Vegeta, I mean, he, he, I see him as a, I see Int Mod Vegeta as a restricted version of uh, Gamma 1. He can have up to 50% damage reduction with uh, about, what, like 280k defense? somewhere around there like 280k and 250k somewhere around that range for Int Vegeta for sure I think he can touch that or maybe a little lower around like the 230k range but I mean guys if he's around like the 230k range up to like 280k range with like 50% damage reduction <laughs> hey Int Vegeta can be pretty goddamn good post super attack then that's not post super attack by the way that's just pre super attack but still the point is that 50 percent damage reduction with over at least 300k defense it's like he can probably touch that i think he's quite good though for sure just around that range with that 50 percent damage reduction this guy is definitely workable and he does have a uh, multiple parts of his pass where he can gain additional defense to make his defensive stat go a bit higher on top of that with his damage reduction i think it modulated is quite powerful at 55 percent i might be undermining his defense at 55 percent it could be a bit more higher because he got, does gain 30 percent attack and defense on super attack he does have 180 percent attack and defense to start turn as well as 50 percent attack and defense performing a super attack so he does have a two separate procs of attack and defense buff from both his passive and a super attack effect as well as uh, is there any more defense in his passive no that's it right no that's not it okay he gains 50 percent more defense through more keys to obtain so yeah, this guy's defense is probably over 300k at 55 percent probably i'm making a guesstimate <laughs> but yeah for sure just like this guy is just a more restricted version of gamma one that's just how i see him and i think that his rotation with vegeta and trunks is very powerful yes now coming at number seven we have yamsha mr dodge mr multiple super attacks mr great leader skill i think yamsha is an absolute dynamo it's like the main thing about yamsha is his dodge he dodges and he just keeps dodging and dodging and dodging because this guy has a dodge over here he gains 10 percent more dodge each super attack performed as well as this guy just having a baseline 50 percent chance to dodge and he also has built-in crit chance so this guy is essentially doing everything in the potential system inside of his passive because he has a 30 percent chance to crit right over here he has a 50 percent chance to dodge right over here and he has additional super attack chance right right over here so yamcha is quite good and he has an amazing leader skill earthbred fighters and turtle school i mean earthbred fighters and turtle school that's like every goddamn goku <laughs> God, God, God. hey guys it's every goddamn goku all right so yamcha's great yamcha is an absolute amazing unit because he is a more so based off of his dodging factor but 
hey, dodge is one of the more powerful abilities in Dokkan, so provided Yamcha dodges once, he can also fall back on his additional dodge chance from his super attacking, so Yamcha is quite good. I think the main thing about him that's good, obviously, is his dodge, but that leader skill is so stupidly powerful, because guess who you could throw on his team? Path to Power Goku. Guess who could throw on his team? Uh, Dokkan Vest God Goku. I mean, this guy is an absolute beast. So next up, I have to be Gamma 2. Now, hear me out. I have Gamma 2 low on this list. Because I feel as though the units ahead of him are just going to be much more better. Right? So Gamma 2 is an amazing unit, obviously. Him right next to Gamma 1 is absolutely just ridiculous. One of the best two-way offensive and defensive rotations in the game. But the thing is, is that we are judging units at 55%. And I feel as if though Gamma 2 at 55% is not the craziest. It's like, if this guy is not doing multiple super attacks for you, uh, guess what, guys? Um, he's body bagged. He's not that great at 55%. I, I gotta break it to you guys. Gamma 2, he has to do multiple super attacks. If he is not doing multiple super attacks... He's going to get you killed. It is what it is. It really is. Gamma 2 is not the most impressive at 55%. Even Link level 10. You have to you have to hope and pray to the masses that this guy does multiple super attacks. But yeah, Gamma 2 is great for sure. He can do like the, the 4 or 5 super attacks, a 50% chance to crit. This guy's, I mean, he's pretty god, goddamn good. I mean, pretty sure he is a support type unit inside of his passive, right? Let me double check that. He is. He gives all allies two key and 30% attacks. So, I mean, yeah, Gamma 2 is good. He's a support type unit that can do like a quadruple to like a quintuple super attack. And he also has the key blast notification. But guys, do keep in mind that this guy has to do multiple super attacks for his defense to look good. He does not do multiple super attacks. He will get your ass blasted. So I think that Gamma 2, based off his RNG factor, is at number six. Yeah, of course, uh, he's better than Int Yamcha. He's essentially, uh, Int Yamcha's the worst version of Gamma 2. I would probably see it. But, ooh, is Int Manja, no, no, not Int Manja Vegeta, excuse me. Is Int Yamcha better than Gamma 2 at 55%? Nah. Ooh. I'm, I'm not going to say he is. I'm not going to say he is. No, we, we ain't going to do all that. We ain't going to do all that. So coming at number five, we have Tech Ultimate Gohan. A very simplistic unit it's easy it's super easy to talk about this unit we pull him up i mean guys uh he greatly stacks attack and defense he builds up key he guards i mean super easy transforms on turn five i mean this guy can have a feather against all types guard uh, additional attack and defensive buff and when he transforms with key i mean i mean guys he takes all the stuff he stacks from his uh, pre-transformation and he puts into his ultimate goal on transformation he just completely eviscerates the boss Tech Ultimate Gohan's a great 55% unit. For sure. Even though he won't have a chance to do additional super attack because he's at 55%, I do think that he is good. And also, this is a list not counting anything with... Well, well actually, no. This is with the... Uh, no, this is not going to be a list with skill orbs, but you can assume that this list is at link level 10. That's, that's fine. But skill orbs is a hell no for this list, provided you guys made it this far into this video, right? I might have to go ahead and repeat that in the video if I remember. So, yeah, I think that Tech Ultimate Gone is better than Gamma 2 at 55%. That's crazy to say, but I do think it's true. I think Tech Ultimate Gone is better than all these guys at 55%. I do think so. This guy just, he just, although he's a self-sufficient unit, this guy just, he works. He, he works, guys. I mean, provided you make it to, like, like who's better on turn 5? Like, Tech Ultimate Gohan with his defense and guard? Or, like, uh, I don't know, like... Ginyu. I mean, technically, it's like him because he's gonna. Is he technically gonna build up faster than him? Well, Ginyu can do a triple super attack at fifty five percent because he has that, that. He has that free five additional. But I think Tech Ultimate Gohan is at number five for damn sure. And coming at number four, we have Dokkan Fast Kale. So the reason why I have Dokkan Fast Kale at number four is because half our leader skill is dead. All right. I feel as though if Universe Six was better, she would be much more higher. It's like, cool, she has a defense, she can build up damage reduction, it's like, she has additional super attack chance here, and additional super attack chance here, so she can technically do a quadruple super attack at 55%, because she's an AGL unit with free 5 additional, but the thing is, is that I feel as if though half her leader skill is dead, to be able to get this additional 160% attack and defense, and additional super attack chance, <clears throat> right? And of course, the Super Saiyan 2 kill transformation is obviously pretty goddamn good, but yeah, Kale is at number 4, because... Yeah, half a leader skill is dead. 
Yep. Just just that. That's like transformation boost and full power is stupid powerful. I mean, guys, take a look at transformation boost. Uh, let's go ahead and peek around. You're on full power. Uh, you're on full power. Uh, I mean, you're on full power. <laughs> are you on full power? I'm pretty sure you are, right? You are. Yeah, you're on full power. I mean, you, do, you guys know how many characters she has on her transformation boost and full power leader skill? Hey, I, I think people are looking past the fact that she has a stupidly great leader skill with transformation boost and full power and only looking at the fact that she has an ass leader skill with Universe 6 and Universe of Swap Saga. I mean, come on, guys. Let's, let's not do all that now. That's not fair to this unit. So I think that Kale is definitely great, of course. You know, damage reduction, defense, quadruple super attacking, post transformation is obviously pretty goddamn good. She has LRK on Khalifa for universe six, but that's really about it. But yes, she's number four. For damn sure. Uh coming at number three, Path to Power Goku. The team synergizes so goddamn well with him on the team. Rainbow Orb changing. He's a nuker, gives the entire team damage reduction. I mean, he's great. What what is there to talk about with Path to Power Goku at 55%? He's an absolute killer. Him being able to support the team with damage reduction and crit chance i believe i mean you go ahead and get path of power kid goku where are you buddy there you are it's like path of power goku is a beast it's like I, I feel like the only issue with him is that he doesn't gain defense on super attack from his super attack effects but it's like he technically does gain defense from his passive on super attack 59 percent attack and defense forming a super attack right he's a support type unit's only youth and db saga which i wish was super class if this guy was a super class support type unit beautiful design I was like, this guy's design already is pretty goddamn good anyways, because he is a warp changer. This guy is a nuker. This guy gains a damage reduction rainbow keys to retain for himself. And when he does gain seven or more key spheres, he gives all allies 8% damage reduction. This guy's great. Nothing really to say about Path to Power Goku. He's an absolute beast, for sure. At 55% and rainbow, of course, obviously. <laughs> Coming at number two, we have Dokkan Pescal Goku. Dokkan Pescal Goku just, he makes the entire team synergize so well. It's like, I feel like... If, going from three to one well gamma one is number one obviously because i mean his 50 percent damage reduction with his high defense at link level 10 at 55 is quite good is but ah, i feel like dokafes got goku just makes a team work so well at 55 percent. sure stacking could probably be a bit slow probably but i feel as if though path of power kid goku and this Dokkan Fist Goku, they make the team synergize so good, and that's so good for a 55% unit. And they both are great, too, right? But yeah, other than that, that's my list, guys. Let me go ahead and delete the list thing and just delete that row. Yeah, that's my list. I know people might be upset at me with saying that, oh, Gamma 2 is better than Gamma... Oh, excuse me. Gamma 2 is better than, than Tech Ultimate Go on at 55%, but I'm sorry, guys. I don't see it. That, that might be crazy. Let me go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see the entire list. Yeah, this is my 55% tier list for not tier list. This is my 55% top 10. And people might say that Gamma 2 is better than Tech Ultimate Go. I don't see it. I do not see it with my extended use with Gamma 2. Gamma 2 sells. He sells. You can probably argue that Yamsha is better than Gamma 2 at 55%. You could. It's because Yamsha, I mean, that dodge is very valuable. It is. Dom's just very valuable with that dodge. Of course, Gamma 2 is good, but I just think that I feel like Tech Ultimate Gohan is just better at 55%. I, it's probably crazy to say, but I, I'm sorry. I, that's just, just what I think. That's probably the biggest thing on this tier list, but I think the rest of this tier list is, is honestly pretty good. Yeah. I think that is really about it. I appreciate you guys for watching. You guys are the best, and I really hope that none of you skip to the end of the video so you don't know what the context is. The context for this tier list is no skill orbs link level 10 or link level 5 whether you have my link level 10 link level 5 or link level ones or not the link leveling doesn't really matter but yeah link leveling doesn't matter no skill orbs 55 percent is the tier list context but yeah please watch the entire video if you skip to the end of the video go watch the entire video so you can see my explanations but yeah i think that is really about it i appreciate you guys watching you guys the best i will catch you guys next video and i love you all peace